Hi, I'm a third year student at MIT Manipal and in this video, I'll be giving you a detailed explanation about all the student projects at my college. I've made a video about the clubs at MIT as well before this one, so I would highly recommend that you watch that before watching this because in that, I've detailed the difference between the clubs and the student projects and left some interview tips as well. With that being said, let's dive right in. I've already covered the difference between clubs and student projects in like a video over here, but I'll mention a brief summary over here again. A fundamental difference is that student projects always work on something physical. It may be a rocket, drones, rovers, off-road trucks, self-driving cars, etc. Whereas, on the other hand, clubs focus on building something which is not physical. Like technical clubs might focus more on working on projects, but non-technical clubs will focus more on honing skills that suit their themes. A public speaking club is going to chalk up the plan to hone your abilities at talking to a larger crowd. Or a dramatics club will be more focused on improving your skills related to acting, production, cinematography or screenwriting and a music club on your musical ability. So how do you actually get into a student project? It is a lengthy process that takes place in various stages. First, there is a test. A written test purely based on science, mostly physics, so practice that well before you appear for the test or if you're someone like me, it may be a little bit difficult because I was really weak at physics. But don't let that discourage you from applying. Even on the paper, if you've written the trashiest answers in your entire life, you will still progress to the next round because they just want you to have the hunger for learning. They don't care about how much of knowledge that you have previously. They only care about how much you're still willing to gain. The next round is an interview. This will be conducted by second year students, your immediate seniors, with whom you will be interacting the most throughout your career at the student project. They are the ones who are going to be in charge of training you in the future. This is also not a very big filter. The interview starts in the typical way. Watch my previous video. I've left a lot of interview tips related to clubs and student projects and I got into like 9 clubs and 4 student projects. So not to brag but I must be doing something right, right? In the interview, they'll ask you questions from the written test that you'd appeared for prior to sitting in the interview, especially if they're wrong. So, a tip, as soon as you finish taking the test, Google all the answers and memorize them correctly. If they give you some material to study beforehand, go into as much depth as possible and study it well. There will be a lot of questions relating to the things that you have read. If you do well, you're in. But wait. You're not in the team yet, you're in the task phase. What is that now? That will be your life for the next 8 to 9 months. Since you have no knowledge about building cars or rockets or robots from scratch, you're not going to be of any help anyway. You won't be even allowed to touch anything. Like I remember when I was in the task phase, I was not even allowed to enter the workshop room of our student project. But that's because the room has a lot of explosive capitals and frankly, I wouldn't trust a first year in there too. Every day, you'll be given a topic kind of related to your subsystem and you'll have to learn about it in extensive detail and make some reports. While that sounds simple, it may spiral into trouble really quickly. The reports that you make every day will keep a track of your progress and give your seniors and this time super seniors an opportunity to grill you in the weekly interviews. Now, they mean business. This is the place where most people drop out because it gets very difficult to manage it. While there is no limit on the number of people that they can accept into the team, only a handful of the people from the task phase will make it to the actual official team. Sometimes, in some student projects, the seniors will intentionally give you really tough deadlines and will try their best to overwhelm you. But that happens only in the most popular student projects because everyone wants to be a part of them and so they're just looking to get rid of people. Do not try to copy-paste from the internet for your reports. 
the seniors will get to know about it they will go through all of them really thoroughly after you have submitted them and then when the interviews are going on if they ask you a question from it and you're not able to answer that immediately tips them off about you being disingenuous and you've not understood everything that you have written try to paraphrase them in a simpler language type them out by yourself after understanding the entire material or write them physically so that you can understand and memorize it a lot better since you cannot be in the task phase of more than one student projects not that it's like a rule or something but just handling the workload of two task phases at the same time will become really stressful and not manageable at all sooner or later you will have to commit to one of the organization because after the first week you cannot be in two places at the same time gradually after the first task phase ends you're officially kind of in the team already or at least that was the case of the student project i was in earlier because out of the 50 people that you had started with only 3 or 4 are left now you will make it to the team most likely the second task phase then becomes extremely subsystem specific because as first years you had been given an option which was a lot wider they were a combinations of finer divisions in the team hence you will be offered even more positions going forward each student project has multiple subsystems a management one where you are the face of the student project and work in collaboration with the technical team to pitch to various sponsors to get funding for your project every year you will need tens of lakhs of rupees to buy all the equipment and all the explosive materials needed to make your student project run building an enormous machine from scratch requires really strong finances so the management team is in cahoots with the university and external companies who can lend you contracts and get you a lot more goodies they're also in charge of the design the pr and everything else that comes apart from building that ridiculously advanced tech fantasy now the question stands should you be joining a student project you see everyone around you interviewing for at least 3 to 4 projects should you jump on the bandwagon as well well that really depends on certain factors and based on them i will be recommending you some choices which are obviously not binding feel free to take all of this advice with a grain of salt most people end up leaving the student project within a couple of months that is because while it sounds like a massive opportunity it also has major cons if you don't take into account how much of an effort you will have to actually put in if you're a student in the mechanical related branches so core mechanical mechatronics aeronautics This is a fantastic opportunity. You should definitely try to be a part of a student project and think of it as a long-term goal. Outside university, you will get very few opportunities as good as this one to prove that you are genuinely passionate about your field and to gain legitimate work experiences in this field. because most people in med go abroad either for grad school or for a job and that's highly competitive so being in a student project for 2 to 3 years is the perfect addition to your profile that will set you apart from all the other set of candidates from what i have heard even during placements if you once mention that you're from a student project they will have the interview only about that they won't even ask you anything else because it is such a significant part of your experience in college i'd highly recommend it for an electronics or an electrical student too if you're actually interested in the branch and would like to pursue it moving forward for cs people the opportunities are there as well but few all the machines use some sort of code or the other and that is where you can come in handy but There are other avenues for venture for a CS student outside college as well. So it may not be very lucrative if you consider the work hours that need to be dedicated and the inflexibility associated with it. You have to go every day after your classes end and basically dedicate all your Saturdays and Sundays, all your free time towards the student project whereas if you choose to go through the other routes like interning at a startup or at an actual mnc or start something of your own or code competitively that may be better for your career if it is such a great opportunity why did i actually leave
I was a part of Thrust MIT. My entirety of first year I had dedicated to that organization. I even got into the actual team, but I still left. Why? A couple of reasons. First, it was really tough. Yes, being a part of an SP is a really difficult task. It is not easy to devote all your time to an organization for which at the start you get almost nothing in return. And the difficulty level just keeps on rising. If you thought that this task phase interview was the toughest, wait till the next week where they'll even take it up a notch. Or if this topic was so out of the world difficult to understand, wait till this research paper hits you and you're drowning in imposter syndrome, wondering whether you're a fraud or not. Second, I had always wanted to start an entrepreneurial venture of my own. Before I had even entered college throughout 12th grade, I had already made up my mind. I am going to be an entrepreneur. It's the best job that exists. The unrealistic expectations faded, but the want to start something of my own always remained. And I knew that it would take up a lot of my time and energy which at that moment was going completely towards the student project. So I chose to quit before I was officially a part of the team. Most of the people don't know this but during onboarding you have to sign an NDA. There are some standard procedures since a lot of the information is confidential and research based you're not allowed to disclose it to anyone. Nothing very serious, they know you're not going to sabotage your own team but just some assurance with the signatures is needed. You also have to pay 5000 rupees. Now depending on whatever SP you're in, it may or may not be refundable. Sometimes in some student projects, when you become a board member or when you leave the project after your term, you get that money refunded to you. In some cases, you don't and you can be even kicked off from the team and not be given that amount back. Whether or not you choose to pay, it's your decision. My parents didn't allow me, they thought it was very shady, convince them as well. And lastly, I left because it was taking a toll on my mental and physical health. My CGPA was really low at the end of second semester and my health was really dicey because we had not been given enough time to come to the campus and get acquainted like everyone else. We just had to jump right into work. A result of too many changes and not enough rest. So yeah, if you think any of these reasons might apply to you, reconsider before applying. But you should still try. That is my advice. Pros, you spend a lot of your time building something meaningful, building something that actually can have real life impact. Cons, it is very rigorous. You have to dedicate 3 to 4 hours every day and it might even increase to 6 to 8 hours if the competition is really close. Pros, a really good addition to your resume. It is as good as having a full time job because you've dedicated so much of time and effort into this and you'll also be participating in an international competition competition and representing your university. That's why it does matter a lot. Cons won't have time to do anything else. I have rarely heard of a person who is a board member in a student project be involved in any other activities at all. Pros, steep learning curve, lots of learning opportunities available if you'd like to grab them. Cons could often take away time from other activities which could often mean lost opportunities. So it's like a time lost, time invested, something. Pros, network. Since you'll be working in close proximity with your seniors, they'll obviously help you out in the future if you've done a great job during your tenure. This stands true not only from seniors and batchmates in your student project, but other SPs as well. And all of them are really smart. Like somehow everyone in a student project never has a CGPA below 8 and they always get the best of internships and the best of jobs. They're a really smart bunch of people to rub shoulders. With. That is it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!